Hello, my name is Todd Hansen. We're here at the Art of Fire Contemporary Glass Blowing Studio in Laytonsville, Maryland, www.artoffire.com. I've been a glass blower for about 12 years now. I've got several different lines of glass work that I work on, and I'll be talking to you about glass blowing. If you wanted to do glass blowing at home, you could probably do it uh, on a really limited budget with a very small space, but you'd have to be really careful about how you handle this equipment because uh, you've got a lot of heat, you need uh, adequate ventilation, uh, and really you are generating a lot of BTUs, so it's going to be, uh, it might be a little bit cost prohibitive, so you, you want to be careful about how you do it because it really does take a lot of time, take a lot of energy. You could get a small, uh, a small electric furnace, small electric kiln, to melt uh, colet, which is uh, clear glass that's already been melted, so you're basically recycling somebody, uh, someone's clear glass to, to make yours. A uh, small glory hole, you can build that, uh, maybe uh, 8 or 10 inch diameter, but uh, it's going to run through a lot of propane, so you want to be careful about how you handle your material and how you handle your energy. Don't forget you need something that you can also anneal with, and an electric annealer is going to need to run uh, you know, it, not only cooling the glass down after you've made it, but it's going to have to run while you're making the pieces as well. So you're going to have to look at about 12 or 14 hours of running an electric uh, furnace, electric kiln while you're cooling your glass. So there are a lot of factors to, con to consider. Um, electric consumption isn't the, isn't the only one, but it's probably the biggest uh, chunk of the budget you're going to have after you buy your equipment. So you're going to need a lot to, you're going to have to, a lot to think about. And, uh, you know, people do it, but it just takes a, a serious commitment to the, to the art.